making over the coming five years, please take a look at projectpaloma.com. But now back to Marius Flotthaus. Unfortunately, after the war, it took some time for Flotthaus to be invited back to his pre-war position at the Concertgebouw. In the intervening years, he worked as a librarian for the music publishing house Don Amos and as a music critic for the daily newspaper Het Vrij Volk, The Free People. And of course, he continued composing. In 1953, he was finally reinstated at the Concertgebouw Orchestra, initially as programme editor and two years later as artistic director, a post he held until 1974. From that point until his retirement in 1982, he was Professor of Musicology at the University of Utrecht. I met Flotthaus just once in November 1999, just after coming off stage having played the Mozart Flute and Harp Concerto with the Concertgebouw Orchestra conducted by Hans Vonck. I was introduced to a rather smartly dressed, bent over, elderly man with clear eyes and a long nose. Before I could shake his hand, he raised his right forefinger and wagged it in my direction. You didn't play the trill I wrote at the end of the cadenza in the first movement. I apologised profusely, but I must admit, in the remaining three concerts, I continued to play the trill as Mozart had written it, rather than change it to the one with which Flotthaus had concluded his cadenza. With hindsight, I just wished that I'd been brave enough to ask him why he'd changed the trill, but now, of course, it's too late. To finish this video today, I'm going to perform two solo works from very different parts of his life. The Obada, written in Kampfurcht in 1944, and the Piccola Fantasia, written in 1979. The latter was dedicated to Cecilia Omes, together with whom I played for many years in the Concertgebouw Orchestra. And I'm hugely indebted to her for speaking to me about when and why he wrote this piece for her, and indeed for providing me with a copy of the original manuscript. The card that accompanied it, as Cecilia tells in the next little video clip, explains how babies of yesteryear were given rattles as gifts, but how he hopes that modern babies will enjoy music being blown. Here's Cecilia telling the story in her own words. I used to play flute quartet with the colleagues of the Royal Concertgebouw Orchestra. We became close friends and happily enough, our music was appreciated by audience and colleagues. When each of us had a baby around the same time, the artistic leader of the Royal Concertgebouw Orchestra, Marius Flotthaus, also composer and friend, treated each of us four, flute, violin, viola and cello, to a solo composition. Piccolo Fantasia was written at the birth of my son, Peter. On the attached congratulation card, Flot wrote, in the old days, newborn babies used to get a rattle. Maybe modern babies will enjoy hearing some music being blown. Before I leave the music of Marius Flotthaus to speak to you directly, I want to thank Joyce Killian, Flotthaus's biographer, for her help and assistance with my research, and also to Eleanor Palmeyer, flautist and founder of the Leo Schmidt Stichting, the foundation dedicated to music that was forgotten after 1945. Music that had been forbidden, but has in recent years been rediscovered in attics, in archives, in garden sheds and garbage bins. <laughs> and of course, a huge thank you to the New York Flute Club, in particular Nancy Toff and Kathy Singer, for inviting me to make this video. Now I'll leave you with the music of Marius Flotthaus. <laughs> 